right, let's explore finding probabilities from normally distributed populations using a Z table. All right, so here we have the Gordon family's electricity bill is normally distributed with a mean of 95 and a standard deviation of 23. Now that tells me a lot about this distribution. That tells me that right at the center of this distribution, the X value right in the middle there is um, X equals 95, which is the mean mu. So mu is 95. Uh, that's one thing it tells me. It also tells me that um, if I go 23 units in either direction, that will represent one standard deviation. So from 95, from 95, I know that the sigma, the standard deviation is 23. I know that if I add 23, this next hash mark right here will be 95 plus 23, or 118. And this next hash mark right here will be 118 plus 23, or uh, 141. 141. And this next hash mark here will be 164. I also know on the other side, if I subtract 23 from 95, this hash mark here would be 72. This hash mark here, if I subtract another 23, would be 49. And this hash mark here, if I subtract another 23, would be 26. <laughs> All right. So that's what I'm being told about the distribution. It's normally distributed, which means there's a bell curve like this involved. The mean is 95, tells me that 95 is directly in the center, the highest part of the hump. And the standard deviation is 23, tells me that if I go increments of 23 in each direction, I'm increasing the number of standard deviations by 1. So from here, this is the middle, that's 0 standard deviations. If I add, I get 1, 2, 3 standard deviations. 3 standard deviations represents 164. All right, so find the probability that the Gordon family has an electric bill that is less than $100. So this is less than $100. To the left of $100 is where you'd be less than $100 on a number line. Um, 95, remember we said, was right at the center here. 95, the mean. 118 is this first hash mark. Um, 100 is between 95 and 118, but closer to 95, a lot closer to 95. So 100 would be like right here. That's the x value of 100. Remember, these up here, these are values of x, all right? Those are x values. And we have what we're looking for is we're looking for the area to the left of 100, I mean 100, yeah, the area to the left of 100. So let's take this vertical line, put it right there on 100, and then we'll shade the area to the left of 100 to show what we're looking for because we know we're looking to be less than 100, and that implies, less than implies that we are to the left of 100 in this region over here. So I'm shading this region over here, I'm shading this area. This is the area that I need. Um, what I have here is a distribution with a mean of 95 and a standard deviation of 23. It's a normal distribution, though. Um, unfortunately, when I use the table, this table doesn't have a distribution with a mean of uh, 95 and a standard deviation of 23. This table has a normal distribution with a mean of 0, so the mean is equal to 0, and a standard deviation of 1, the standard deviation of 1, meaning that here's the mean of 0, one unit or one hash mark to the right, you have 1 because the standard deviation is 1. If you add 1 to 0, you get 1. Add another 1, you get 2. Add another 1, you get 3, and then you can also subtract 1. This would be negative 1 negative 2, and negative 3 standard deviation. So this is the standard normal distribution. This is the z-score table. 
These values up here, remember I said these are values of x? The values that we get down here are going to be values of z, z values, all right? So what we need to do is we have this 100. We have that this vertical line, actually, can't really see it anymore. We have that this vertical line here represents the x value 100, remember? And the x value of 100, we want to have the area to the left of that because we want it to be less than 100. What we're going to do is we're going to take that x value of 100, we're going to take this value of x, plug it into this formula that transforms it to a value of z, and we're going to get down here, down here we're going to get a value of z. And that value of z is going to correspond to the value x equals 100. And the area to the left of that z score will correspond directly to the area to the left of this x value 100. So they're related in that way. The area to the left of 100 is going to be exactly the same as the area to the left of whatever z-score it is we find here. So let's go ahead and find the z-score. The z-score says we take x, which is 100, that particular x value. We subtract mu, which is 95, the mean, the middle, remember? And we divide that by sigma, which is the standard deviation of 23. 23. When you do this, you get z is equal to 0.22. So we get the z-score, z is 0.22, which means the area to the left of 0.22, this value right here, the area to the left of that value on this z-chart or in this z-graph is the same as the area to the left of 100 in this distribution. So these two areas are identical. All I have to do is use the table now to find the area to the left of 0.22 the area to the left of 0.22. So I go, and this z table works this way. In this column, this blue column, I'm going to look for the, hundred, the um, ones and the tenth digit. So the ones and the tenth digit. In this case, the ones digit is zero. There's no whole parts here, no whole z's. And then 0.2 is the tenth part. So I look for 0.2. 0 0.2 is here. I look for the row that has 0 0.2, and I look for the column that has the tenth digit, the hundredth, or sorry, not the tenth digit, the hundredth digit. The hundredth digit is 2 also. So this is 0.2 and 2. If you add these two, the z-score in this row to the z-score in this column, you get 0 0.2 plus 0 0.02, which is exactly the z-score we want the area for, 0 0.22. So if you just look at the first column to find the uh, ones and the tenths digit, and look at the top row to find the hundredth digit of whatever z-score you find, you just look at the cross-section of those two, and that area will be the given or the um, the required area that you need to answer your question. So that means that the area to the left is 0 0.5871. So this area to the left of this z-score is 0 0.5871, which corresponds directly to the area to the left here. The area to the left here is also 0 0.5871. And since area corresponds to probability, that means the answer for the first question, find the probability that the Gordon family has an electric bill less than 100. That means that probability that x is less than 100 is 0.5871, or about 59%. All right, so that's the answer for part A. Um, Take a look at the next video. Uh, we'll do an answer for part B. And then the subsequent video, the third video, we'll look at part C.